on this week's edition of Titans All Access. It's our post-buy show. We've got some experts in studio to discuss what the Titans have done right getting to 3-0, what they can do better, and what the rest of the season looks like. And our Nissan Insider is the best punter in the NFL, Brett Earn. Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derrick Henry, sacked! Rashad Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to the post-buy edition of Titans All Access. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and we're with others. Jonathan Hutton from Titans Radio is here, and our own Titans Radio game day analyst Dave McGinnis is here. So let's start with Coach Mack. Titans are still 3-0. What did Mike Vrabel do that impressed you in the month of September to get the Titans to 3-0? Steady hand on the wheel. You know, starting with the preseason, a lot of different things. We were behind in every football game that we've played so far. Steady hand on the wheel, no panic. When there's no panic at the top, there's no panic throughout. And you could see that. Mike Vrabel has a very good grasp of what this football team is, who this football team is, and what they need. And what they needed the first three weeks, steady hand on the wheel. Jonathan, what has surprised you the most about the Titans 3-0 start? I think it's the fact that there hasn't been a formula that I would have predicted that has them 3-0. Derrick Henry's not running for a boatload of yards. He's getting the job done and doing it well, but not to the extent we saw in the postseason. And Coach Mack just mentioned it. They're, they're trailing in games. They're not running with the lead or have the lead where they can run clock in the four-minute offense. They're doing it the non-traditional Titans way. And I think that's what's most surprising because once they do crank up and get going, sky's the limit for this group. Yeah, there's room for improvement on this football team. All right, so Jonathan, you've been with Titans Radio for 15 years now. Does that make you feel old? A little bit. Okay. But before <laughs> that, you were at MTSU, and before that, you grew up in McMendel. Yep. So you've seen the whole 20-plus years of the Titans. Do you ever remember a story like the Steven Goskowski story from Denver to Minnesota? If I don't remember it, you will. But no, I don't. I mean, that, he misses his first four kicks in Denver, handles the post game like a pro, field goal game against Jacksonville and then hit six kicks on the road in Minnesota, including a 55-yarder for the win. I haven't seen anything like it. So after missing his first four kicks, he's the special teams player of the month for the first month of, of this Titan season. Crazy. When Titans All Access returns, Coach Mack takes us beneath the surface. Stick around. Glad you are with us for the post-buy edition of Titans All Access as Amy Wells and I continue conversation with Jonathan Hutton and Coach Dave McGinnis. All right, Jonathan Hutton, let's go to you now and let's get into Derrick Henry a little bit. Team's been loading the box on Derrick Henry, and yet he's got two 100-yard games. So are, are you surprised he's even been able to reach 100 twice this year with what opposing teams have been doing? You know, going into it, we knew they were going to stack the box. He faces the eight-man boxes quite a bit. He did last year and had a ton of success down the backstretch of the season. So that part doesn't surprise me. He gets yards after contact among the best in the league. But to me, Mike, the key is the volume of carries. That's the key in the numbers that he has right now. He's starting off last year, there were games where he's having 13 carries, 17 carries. He is the go-to guy, even when they're down 12 points in Minnesota, the offense still uses Derrick Henry like they're up 12. And I think that's the key for Henry is the volume back is getting the carries in the second half, just like he would in the first, and that's leading to success on the ground. I think it also goes back to we talk about steady hand on the wheel. This is their formula. This is the horse that we're riding. This is really, really important because you cannot go away from your formula. You don't need to. And again, as I said, don't worry about the volume of carries right now. As Bum Phillips said, that ball's not real heavy. Just keep giving it to the big guy. Now it's if working. We're, if we're going to talk about Derrick Henry, we've got to really break down some Derrick Henry. Coach Mack, why don't you break down some of his biggest plays from that Titans-Minnesota Vikings game on Beneath the Surface? I love the 12-yard runs. I, I love the 12-yard run. When he drops, Amy, when he drops the same foot, same shoulder, and when people are watching, they'll understand what I'm saying. When he, he's coming through the line of scrimmage, once he's cleared the trash in the middle, when he sticks that left foot in the ground and drops that left shoulder on the first man that shows up, 
He's working through them. And when he gets the football in those situations, Jonathan is right. He has not had a lot of space to run in yet. Because normally where he's most dangerous is if he gets an edge really quick or if he gets through and then makes one move and can get to the corner. He hasn't had that yet. But what I like is he's punishing people. And that's important because he doesn't feel the effects of those hits. I promise you, those guys in the different colored jerseys, they feel it. Coach Mack and Jonathan Hutton staying here with Amy and me for more discussion on Titans All Access. Stay with us. I can't believe we've made it this long without talking about Brett Kern. Brett Kern has had such a great season. Coach Mack, what makes him so good at his job? He's a pro. He's all the way a pro. I was here on the coaching staff when we brought him in here from Denver, you know, and, and he learned from Craig Hendrick, but he studies his craft. I mean, it, he is like a golfer, a professional golfer that immediately goes to the driving range after he gets through playing. I mean, that's, that's him. And he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what uh, is wrong or what is right. And this guy is one of the, he's got all the clubs in the bag. I mean, he can hit the 90 yard wedge. He can hit the bomb off the tee. He can place it where he wants to. I love Brett Kern, but he's a professional through and through. He certainly is. And that's a good lead in because this week's Nissan Insider on Titans All Access is none other than Brett Kern. How is Brett Kern, the punter, different from Brett Kern, the punter, back in the Denver days? Well, I mean, besides being a lot older <laughs> and a lot more games under my belt, you know, I think in Denver, you know, really you're just trying to make a team. I feel like you're, you're trying to stay afloat, you know, those first couple of years that you're in the league. And, you know, right now it's a totally different mindset of, you know, I feel a lot more relaxed out there. I've obviously played in a lot of stadiums, have a lot of punts under my belt. Uh, and just have a different outlook on uh, just punting in general. Um, you know, I just want to go out there and, and do the best that I can on each punt. You know, we, we've talked about it before. I don't get lost in the, st the statistics, you know, that can happen every game. And um, really just have fun and enjoy it. You know, I'm not going to be able to play football forever and just enjoy each moment that's before me. Is there a fraternity among NFL punters and kickers? There is, yeah. I. Uh, you know, you got a lot of guys, uh, text messages, uh, you know, whether it's through social media or whether you just, you know, text on your phone. A lot of times you, just, you kind of throw around, you know, I'll watch guys like Sam Cook uh, in Baltimore, Johnny Hecker, Morstead, and, you know, those guys are very innovative. You know, Johnny's come up with some, some really cool punts over the years. So whether it's texting him, trying to pick his brain, what he's doing, you know, Sam in Baltimore was one of the first guys to come up with that boomerang type punt, uh, just picking his brain about it. And then of course, there's always uh, time spent on the golf course. You know, that's uh, just something that I think a lot of us do. And uh, it's a great time to, to spend together. When you down a punt at the one yard line in the AFC playoffs at New England, and the game ends, you win the ball game, you come back and you look at your phone. Have you gotten a bunch of texts from other NFL punters saying, dude, beautiful? Yeah, I, I did. That was uh, that's probably the most text messages I've had in a really, really long time uh, after that game. And, and honestly, you know, I, I don't think it really hit me uh, just kind of the magnitude of that punt until, you know, when, whenever it was uh, in quarantine and, and the local TV shows were, or the local TV station was showing the replay of the game. And that was really the first time that I got to see it happen. And, you know, with the with Tony Romo and, and Jim Nance calling it, uh, just the TV copy. Belichick started as a special teams coach. He has all that stuff. Now he's come all the way back up to near the midfield mark. They're coming after him with everybody. They blocked four punts this season. Most in the league. And Kern. Gets a line drive punt away that's bounding to a halt at the one. Perfection. Dire straits indeed, Jim. This one just got, that's, that's, Coach Belichick said, 
He's the best right now, and Kern did it. That's really the first time that it sunk in because, you know, after the New England game, you knew that we were on to Baltimore. So you, you kind of already, you know, in the locker room after the game, you enjoyed the moment. But really on the bus ride to the airport, you're already starting to think about Baltimore. I was already looking at the weather forecast <laughs> for the next week, and, and you kind of forget about what kind of happened in that game. And so, you know, we were all watching, sitting down as a family, watching the replay of the game, and to be able to see that punt was, uh, that was pretty, pretty crazy. Had a lot of moments like that in the second half of that game for the Titans. And you will be the first to say it's not just you. It's your coverage guys. It's your snapper, Bo Brinkley. But for coaches to say, you know, the special teams can win us a game and most of the media and the fans go, "Eh, whatever. In that ball game, it was really, really true what a difference the special teams made in the second half of a game that did not feature an offensive point. Yeah, it's... uh... It's pretty crazy. You know, when Coach Vrabel got here uh, a couple years ago, he was big, obviously, on field position, uh, more so than probably, you know, most coaches that I've had. And he brought out, uh, you know, Coach Ackerman, uh, our special teams coach. He was talking about the statistical, he had a ton of statistical data of where teams start with their field position and how hard it is, you know, the more backed up that they are, how hard it is for them to score a touchdown, or it may be, uh, you know, how hard it is for them to get a field goal. And then, you know, if, if they're really backed up as far as them punting it, and then where we start, and from there where we start our field position, the percentages of us getting a field goal or even scoring a touchdown. And uh, that was really the first time I ever heard stats like that in my career. And so, you know, coach obviously challenges me. Inside the 20s are good, but if you can get one inside the 10, you know, then you're stealing uh, a first down for your defense. That means the, that the offense has to get one more first down to make up for maybe getting a ball, uh, let's say on the 18 compared to the eight. And so you just helped out the defense, you know, by getting an extra first down for them. You know, I take a lot of pride in really trying to pin teams deep as far as I can, you know, not getting touchbacks. A great punter in the NFL is a weapon, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's what you want to be you want to be a weapon to affect change in how your defense and your offense are affected by how you kick the ball. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you want to be considered a weapon. You want to be able to go out there if you're backed up and you need a big punt, you know, you got to be able to go out there and deliver it. Uh, if you're playing against a great returner, you know, how often can you get them to the sidelines or even kick it out of bounds? You know, when I go back at the end of the season and I chart all my kicks and look at different situations, you know, I can go back and look at, hey, you know, I remember when I had this punt and it went out at the five, you know, the next plays that transpired. I look at the Cleveland game, you know, last year, uh, having that punt, I think it was like a 70 yarder and the returner let it go. And, and Milt, Chris Milton did a great job of getting down there. Uh, we downed it on the three. And then I think two plays later, Cameron Wake had a sack for, uh, for a safety, and just kind of how that changed the momentum. And, you know, a lot of people might not remember that play, but, you know, I know that that was uh, a big momentum changer in that game. All pro Brett Kern, thanks for being our Nissan Insider this week. Thanks, Mike. Later in Titans All Access, more thoughts on the Titans from our special roundtable. Stay tuned. Coach Mack is the guy who's been the surprise who is the least surprising. John U. Smith to this point? I don't think any of us are surprised, and Titans fans should not be surprised either. I mean, this guy's a good football player. If he doesn't hurt the knee on the 99-yard run against Jacksonville, I mean, he's on his way that season to really doing some things. You've got a big athlete that is a combat catcher, but also he can he can make he can run the whole route tree. We have seen him in the end zone. He's a favorite target in the end zone for two reasons: he uncovers and he catches the ball. Johnu Smith is a really nice player. You're seeing these tight ends all across the league. If you're going to be successful in the National Football League today, you need one. He's ours. The defensive side of the ball, Jonathan, Kenny Vaccaro, is he the most underrated player so far this season? Uh, He's among them. I mean, he's played all of the 199 defensive snaps. He he doesn't come off the field defensively. Uh, The Jacksonville game comes to mind, 10 solo tackles, uh, where he, he has the fumble recovery in that game, a couple of pass breakups. He was all over the place. And Vaccaro is one of those players where he needs to make a big hit to get into rhythm. And he did that against Jacksonville. LaVishka Chenault took a carry. And I I can't remember what the gain was, Mike. It was four or five yards. 
And Vaccaro came up and laid the wood to him. And from that moment on, it just switched for him where he, he was the, one of the go-to players. And the other thing I really think uh, that he benefits from is playing next to Kevin Byer. They're interchangeable. And the versatility that this defense has as a tandem makes Vaccaro that much more valuable. How has Jadevian Clowney fit so far, Coach, and what do you expect them to do with Clowney the rest of the way? Well, he's continuing to get into football shape. Let's be honest. I mean, you can push as many sleds around a gym as you want to. You can jump over all, all the balls and the bags you want to. You've got to get in football shape, and that's what he's doing right now. But when we've talked about the word disruptor with him, it, it is an adjective that describes him to a T. We've already seen that. Now, we've seen him wear down, too. Jonathan's talked about the number of snaps. He's played up into the 90% of snaps too and so when that starts to come down his productivity will start to come up but he uh, Mike Vrabel knows how to use him because he's already his first ball game he was on both edges he also stood up as a joker in the middle we're gonna see a lot more out of him I mean I'm so happy he's on this team because as a former defensive coordinator when I have a piece like that that I can move around there are things I can do to create matchups that the opponent doesn't like all right, I've got to ask this question, both of you. Jonathan, I'll start with you. Who is the player that you are most excited about seeing throughout the rest of the 2020 season? I'm going to name him so Coach Matt can't. Jeffrey Simmons, uh, hands down for me. I can't wait to see his athletic ability meet technique. We're already starting to see that. But, man, he was ragdolling some players up front against Minnesota. And now we're seeing him become a true star within this Titans defense. He will be the talk amongst the league by December with the way he's playing right now in September. Fantastic player, and now we get to see him become a true star within this lineup. Darrington Evans, I want to see this kid healthy. I want to see this kid healthy and, and, and into the offense the way I know Arthur Smith wants to use it. There are so many ways that we can use this guy, and people are, are really keen on Derrick Henry right now. Well, what I want to see, I'd love to see both those guys in the game at the same time. Let a defensive coordinator try to match up against what we call 20 personnel, and then let's, I want to really see this kid put into the offense now when he's healthy. Want to get a question in for the OTP crew? Send us your OTPQ. Just go to TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ and ask your question. When Mike, Amy, Coach Mack, and Jim convene for the OTP, they'll give you an answer. That address again to submit your questions is TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ. Next week on Titans All Access, it's time to dive back into AFC South play with a visit from the new look Houston Texans. We'll have a full preview with General Manager John Robinson. Our Nissan Insider is Pro Bowl safety Kevin Byer, a true Titan on and off the field. All that and more next week on Titans All Access. Now here's another guy that may have flown under the radar with some Titans fans, Dennis Kelly. Coach Mack, how has he done at that right tackles position so far this season? Solid, so solid, and we have not had to help him a bit. Arthur Smith in the three ball games has not chipped that way. He has not turned the line that way. He has done nothing to help him. Now that's important. That's as important to an offensive coordinator, Amy, not having to help your edges, as it is to a defensive coordinator not having to help your corners. When your edges are secure, both on defense and on offense, you've got nine other guys you can play with. That's huge. Dennis Kelly was the only newcoming starter this year for the Titans. They returned 10 guys. He's the only new one. The one who had the most question, though, was Corey Davis, Jonathan. A guy who did not have a spectacular year a year ago. We learned that he had a toe problem, and yet he battled through it. And here's Corey Davis, 15 catches for over 200 yards. What have you thought? Uh, he's been very good in his contract here. 15 catches on 19 targets. He's averaging two more yards per reception than he did last year, just going back to the, comparing the two players, if you will. I think a couple of things. First, he's more physical at the point of attack, attacking the football. He's winning the 50-50 balls his way, fighting for it. I like the aggressive style that Corey Davis is bringing to the football field through three wins. Also, he would admit this, he was very tough on himself over the last couple of years. And I think that comes with some of the pressure that's being the number five overall pick. He's not the number one guy. A.J. Brown is the number one receiver within this offense. And I think that alleviated some of the pressure there, and he's not being as hard on himself. That leads to production on the field because I think he's more relaxed as a player. And 
personally, I like receivers in contract years. There's, I mean, he says he wants to put up numbers. So far, he's doing just that. You know, what, what Corey Davis, though, brings, and, and what's so important to know, you know, let's talk some football here. Yeah. He's a Z receiver, <laughs> which means he can be in motion quite a bit. If people are going to stack the box, as we've talked about, putting eight people up there, that means you've got the middle of the field closed. That corner's by himself until Corey Davis gets to the middle of the field. He's a long strider. He can run away from guys that are tailpiping him across the middle. And you're right, Hutt. He's reaching out with his hands, and he's made some real collision catches. I'm not talking about contested catches. I'm talking about big-time catches where somebody hits him like a truck bumper as soon as he catches it, and he's hanging on. I like that. Harold Landry, Jonathan, outside linebacker, does not have a sack yet. And yet, whenever something good has happened for this defense in 2020, he's been around. He's playing well. Do you get the idea he might explode over the final three months I'm of the year? I'm waiting for it, yeah, because it, eventually he's going – all of that hard work is going to pay off. He's around the quarterback too often for it not to. I, I think that it also is dependent on how much does Clowney come along within this defensive front. We expect him to do some big things down the stretch of the season here. I think Landry benefits from that. And also Beasley, because Beasley is interchangeable style-wise with what Landry does. I think there's a rhythm to his pass rush, and I also think Shane Bowen's onto something when he says less is more. Right now he's playing 96% playing of the snaps due to the depth at the position. I, I hope that comes down a bit. Landry, I'm not saying he's out of shape. He, he's, he gets after it. I love his work ethic, but I, I do think a couple extra rest periods will benefit him, especially down November and December as we're talking. Pretty good, I think. Yeah. I think we should have them back on at some point. I think we'll keep them, Mike. Jonathan Hutton, 104.5 The Zone and Titans Radio and Titans Radio's Game Day Analyst, Dave McGinnis. Thank you for joining us on Titans All Access. Great this to be was, here. This was fun. This was fun. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.